Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Live with Kappa. I am Donna Bishop, the host of the podcast Fashion Talks, and it has absolutely been my pleasure to have been moderating these conversations over the past few months. I am so looking forward to our guest today. Today. today we are being joined by Jose Rebo. There he is. Hello. Jose is the Executive Vice President of Digital and Innovation for Cadillac Fairview. And I actually can't think of, I'm so glad you're here, Jose, because I can't think of a more timely guest as our provinces continue to open up more and more. And in fact, you're going to be our final guest for these Live with Kappa episodes because we're going to be taking a bit of a hiatus for the summer. So welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely perfectly. Awesome. No problem awesome. at all. <laughs> Before we get into the real um, you know, meat of our conversation around the retail sector and the future of shopping malls in this post-COVID world that we're living in as Canadians, can you tell everyone a little bit about you know, what is your role? What does the EVP of digital and innovation mean for a company like Cadillac Fairview? Well, I like to describe my role as having both a tremendous opportunity, but also some big challenges ahead of us. And uh, I have the privilege of working with some really smart people across the company and outside on, you know, the challenge of trying to drive traffic for our properties, improve the customer experience, monetize that experience, and also help create innovative you know, rewarding experiences for customers that are either shopping in our properties or working in our office towers. And so every day is different. I sit at the senior leadership team level um, as a member of the executive team, help prioritize initiatives that make sense for our customers. We do a ton of research and a lot of that work is, is done in an agile manner. Um, and so the privilege of working with technology, marketing and digital innovation all under one umbrella gives us the ability to pivot very quickly and, and that's something that we're quite excited about. And, and it's an honor and privilege to participate in that myself. We're going to be getting into some of those pivots in a minute. But, you know, this has been an incredibly tough time for, for retailers and for mall vendors. With 19 Cadillac Fairview shopping centers across Canada, I, I know this is not lost on you. How are you and your team poised to support the, the retailers and the vendors in the shopping malls as we open up across Canada? Well, as you know, the, the pandemic has hit our properties, our retailers and businesses and clients in a very dramatic way. And, and, and many of them have suffered immeasurable losses. To be honest, it's been a very difficult time for them and, and retailers that are being forced to close their doors. Yet at the same time, some are considered essential services and having to protect their employees and make sure that the environment is safe for them to operate. This has been an environment that we've never seen before. And, and what's interesting is that a lot of the ideas we had that we wanted to deploy seemed like interesting ideas that may help the customer experience and are now considered table stakes. Something like curbside delivery, curbside pickup. The amount of volume that's going through curbside pickup now through a safety lens is like nothing we've seen before. And while that was an innovative idea we were testing and wanted to roll out, it's now become something we've had to accelerate in weeks. And there's an example where the retailer model has gone completely from, you know, online or in store to now having to try and do both through something like curbside. And so I, I think we're poised to help facilitate an easier transition post COVID things like being able to help the customer navigate the property differently, our marketing team um, immediately jumped at the opportunity to create different, you know, wayfinding and signage, both decals on the floor, as well as the toolkits for retailers as they came back. We've really leaned in heavily to uh, help them help the retailers recover in particular. And our early indicators since we started opening in May 4th are that these strategies are working and the feedback we're getting from tenants uh, and from clients is quite positive. And so I think we're poised in the sense that we are set up to do this kind of work. And, uh, and the team is leaning in quite, quite comfortably with the operations team. Jose, what does curbside pickup look like in a mall context? So the advantage we have uh, in some of our um, suburban, urban locations are parking lots that we can cordon off and create 
a pickup area. And so we've taken three or four areas around, for example, Polo Park in Winnipeg. We have zones outside certain demarcation points where we've identified that a customer can come. They have a parking zone and a parking spot that they can then use to communicate directly with the retailer. The retailer communicates directly with the shopper at a certain time when the package is ready and then literally takes the, the, the order out to the customer uh, in a safe manner. In other cases, we are testing the option of us actually doing that running ourselves uh, as a service for some retailers. So this has been an ongoing experimentation. And what we start on a Monday, thinking this is what curbside looks like by Friday, it actually looks different based on retailer feedback. And that's the advantage of doing things, I think, in the way that we've organized them is we pivot and we're constantly pivoting. So it depends on the property is a short answer. Um, but in general, it feels like a dedicated zone and, uh, and an ability for a customer to find the retailer and the retail associate to find the customer. I'd also say that because of our advances in digital, we've actually been able to embed some of these capabilities in our new Live by CF app. So a customer can actually navigate the property before they get to the property and find out what zone they're going to and actually park mm -hmm. at that right zone instead of run, you know, driving around the property looking for the spot themselves. Yeah, C controlling the chaos and the traffic flow, I'm sure, is a, is a major consideration. I want to get into the app in a couple of minutes, but before we talk more about these specific conditions and, and pivots, are you, are you looking to other parts of the world to see what has been working in other centers? Like, are, you, are there best practices that have kind of been working on a global scale that you've been looking to, or has this all been an internal think tank of sorts? Great question. Um, no, we certainly are um, taking advantage of the sequence of the pandemic and reopening in Asia and the Middle East in particular. That's where we really focused our efforts. So what we did at about week three of the pandemic in Canada was we started um, exploring what was happening on the ground through a variety of means, uh, digital contacts with our uh, marketing contacts, with our digital contacts and with our research team. And we identified how properties were opening and, and as an example, the frequency of disinfecting of the property was one that the operations team picked up on right away. Placement of hand sanitizer at key locations. And as simple as that sounds, that called, you know, getting back to basics, knowing what others have done and what worked and didn't work, when were face masks appropriate, when are face masks not appropriate, directional flow of traffic, where to put the vehicles, all of that helped us. And so we look at Asia and Middle East in particular as two, as two areas, especially in the, in the, during the pandemic, that have really helped us learn what to do and accelerate. And then we've ended up doing the same for office as well, uh, where we have toolkits for our tenants that are for our retail clients and office clients that are coming back and, uh, and learning from these other markets. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these changes, you know, you talked about traffic flow and masks. Yeah, these are things that are going to be very new for Canadians. But what I gather is they're things that have been in place kind of consistently in other parts of the world. Are they going to be permanent things, do you think, that we'll see here? Or will they ebb and flow with time? What is your, what is your sense of what we're going to be looking at as a new normal? Again, another great question. I think, I think some of them, it really depends on the health policies and where we are from a health perspective in a number of cases in Canada. I think something like uh, what, we're, what we're finding out is that curbside pickup as a convenience and efficiency for shoppers is likely going to stay in some form. Now, does curbside evolve? So, for example, we're already thinking of what phase two of curbside might look like. Phase two of curbside might be a combination of, yes, you can park in your spot and you know that's your spot, but perhaps we also have a locker arrangement whereby you actually leave your car there, you go shopping, someone returns something, and essentially you have the option of having it delivered to your car or put in a locker and it's on your terms. So if you choose to actually navigate the property and you want the safety and the convenience of not having to carry bags, I'm gonna encourage that we keep that kind of solution irrespective of the health standards because it's at minimum a great health standard and at best it's gonna be an amazing experience if we do it right. And what I just described does exist in other markets, has been piloted in a number of uh, different locations here, but something that we could tie together to a better journey. So I think some of that will stay on the face mask we're certainly encouraging, as of yesterday, we opened all of our properties uh, in retail. We're encouraging the use of face masks, especially when physical distance is not possible. Um, but that really depends on the health standards. I think, I think culturally, there's a big difference between Canada, let's say, and China, where in China, 
it comes from the place of I might be mm -hmm. infected, so I don't want anyone around me to be infected, so I'll wear a face mask, and it's quite routine. Here, culturally, we've not um, adopted that, so I think it takes a while. We're still thinking of it, I think, in general, from what I'm reading, um, as, as if I'm wearing the face mask to protect myself, and that's actually a bit counterintuitive to the, the Chinese customer who thinks of it differently, right. think of it from I'm protecting others. So it's hard to tell at this stage whether it's going to be permanent, the face mask in particular. What I hear you saying is that there will be some things that might just evolve as a result of COVID into really wonderful best practices because they, they actually enhance the experience for, for the retailer as well as for the client. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. Is yes. And I think, I think if we can identify Amazing. ways to do that, um, that will help the customer come back and feel safe and help the retailer recover as well. What about the food court, Jose? Like, obviously, the mall is full of people who are, who are working and need to eat. Are there things we can expect to see differently in terms of the, the hospitality or, the, or the, uh, the food and beverage components of, uh, of the you shop? You know, the food, the food court, and in some cases, we call them food halls or food and beverage centers of experience. In some, in some properties, in some shopping centers, this is comprised a very large percentage of our floor space and revenue and experience for the customer. And it's an, it's an aspect that, you know, when we look to, for example, Brazil, um, some of the best steakhouses are in malls. And why is that? Because I, can, I have a spot to park my car or I use public transit to get to the, to, the, to the dinner and I'm meeting someone else for dinner. And I think we still have, we have seen a number of our um, properties advance that. So we have Joey's, for example, as a great client of ours and a great uh, food experience. Um, but let's talk food court. So within the food court, right now we cannot offer seating uh, based on the provincial guidelines. So if we can't offer seating, how do we best set up an environment for those food court um, um, you know, merchants and, and clients to still, to still provide a service? So we have two things that are happening. One is the customer orders directly through their own delivery app, um, waits for the product using a physical distance manner and then picks up, the, picks up their food and, and, uh, and goes about their day. Another model is we're trying to work with them to figure out how we can help them scale back to the curbside, I said earlier, where we can extend their reach to customers who are potentially living or working in the area and want to take advantage of the food offerings at the local mall. How do we play that bridge between the food court kitchen and the curbside? So that's also another one that we're looking at is how do we expand the channel and thinking of it differently, not as, I'm sitting in a food court, but that's a kitchen and that kitchen can tap into Uber Eats. It can tap into our own CF Eats. It can tap into our curbside delivery. So we're thinking about ways to turn this in the short term. Uh, we do think when seating comes back, we'll be back to this, you know, positive energy in the property where people can eat as a family or a group of friends and, and think differently. But for now, we're, we're thinking a bit more on a, as a logistics challenge, um, more so to try and help these retailers recover again. It sounds like you're really walking a tightrope of the, the, uh, the, the commerce and the workplace of the shopping mall with the community experience of the shopping mall and helping make sure that both of those things can continue to get respected and considered as we move forward as things open up. Is that fair to say? Yes, sorry, there was just a bit of a delay. Um, so oh, Jose, can you still hear me? Yes, yes, oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Oh, perfect. Okay. I know technology is imperfect yeah, sometimes. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, there was just a bit of a delay. So I think, I think the ability to do both and keep the customer engaged in the process is what's key. Um, what we anticipate will happen. And this is where we're really placing a lot of our, uh, emphasis is how do we keep that customer connected to everything that's going on in the property? And I'll give you one example of where we could take all these questions around, how does it, if you think about it, so my curbside experience might be separate, then I've got a locker, but I'm dealing with each individual retailer, but I know Lululemon has a sale on, so I wanna go wait in line. These can all be quite fragmented experiences. And if you compare what I just described to say shopping on Amazon or some electronic marketplace and for e-commerce, that's all done for you, right? You have your electronic storefronts, you can, you've got one shopping cart. It's a very different experience. So 
we that's not lost on us. So what we're doing is we're leaning in to create a digital ecosystem for physical retail. And in doing so, as an example, instead of you attending and then waiting for the line and waiting to go to Lululemon, why don't we offer a service where you could check in and you know that your slot is two o'clock and you could potentially have a personalized appointment with someone at Lululemon. So take advantage of the fact that we are in this pandemic and in the situation where we need to keep physical distance. We also don't want to encourage huge lineups. And so how do we do that? Well, you do it digitally. And I think the best way to do it digitally is imagine creating, which is what we're working on now, mm -hmm. a line management solution that's essentially the Disney fast pass of the shopping experience. So you can go about planning your day and that might include food, that might include someone delivering a package to your car. That kind of service will bring people back and keep them coming back. And, and if I do it well um, as an operator uh, with respect to offering these services, then our belief is that the retailers will do better the clients will come back, the shoppers will continue to operate. And, and one nice side benefit of that, it's a richer experience than it is if I have to manage all of those in a fragmented basis. That's the hypothesis. The, the efficiency of that possibility, um, I can only imagine how, one, how desired that would be for retailers and, and consumers alike. What are some of the other innovations or pivots that Cadillac Fairview has been working on that you've been a part of. You've mentioned the app a couple of times. Is that something that has been explored in a different or a deeper manner since we've been in yeah, this, uh, this COVID lockdown? You know, I have to say that we were going down the path of developing an app uh, for our shoppers before COVID. We were actually planning to launch it um, in the spring. And when we saw what was happening in other countries and when we realized how painful this exercise was going to be for our retailers, we actually doubled down on investing in areas where we think the customer safety is priority. So we, for example, embedded a solution in this live by CF app where the digital directory is now in your pocket. So for every property that we own across the country, all 19 shopping centers, you can have your favorite mall, you can explore the property, you have the ability to find a store, find where the curbside delivery is, identify on a map where the hand sanitizer station is, you'll know and be notified if certain stores are open, if certain stores are not open. So purely as a shopping tool um, during the pandemic and during our reopening, that app has become something that we're very proud of bringing to the market now because you know this took, this took a few weeks to kind of tweak it for COVID, but the fundamental premise of the app had already been twist, tested a number of times. We tested it both in pilot and in beta uh, at the Toronto Eaton Center and a few other properties. So over time, that app will, not, will, will certainly evolve. It'll not just be about COVID-related precautions, but imagine having a director in your pocket. We can, you can also search for products. So we have over half a million SKUs now where you can search for you know, black jeans, um, high heels, shoes, uh, leather jacket, and we will provide you with a full list of inventory uh, for that product, both customer um, both clients wow. of ours who have real-time inventory in the property and or a link to their e-commerce site so that you can navigate their proper their product. So before you get to the property, you can pretty much narrow your search. And so I'd like to describe it as the directory that actually has, you know, um, superpowers because you are in control and you can determine what you want to look for before you get there. And so this is the beginning of us really moving from discovery to delivery. So we're going to help open up how much you can discover about what's available at your local property at CF. And that's where this will become really interesting, I think, for the clients is when we start moving in that direction. And will something like that, do you envision it only being something that is about the, the retailers in the property proper or is it something that could actually expand the marketplace so we this is where i think i want to do a, a shout out to kafa and the work that we've done with them last year we had promised that we would expand that work uh, we did a wear canada proud initiative uh, an activation at the Eden center in july so about a year ago and mm -hmm. around canada day and what that taught us was for example we had the opportunity for jenny bird dean davidson uh, Nogu, Matt and Nat, a number of Canadian brands were included. And yes, I'd say 80% mm -hmm. of those brands that we highlighted were available for sale in the Eaton Center, in the CF Toronto Eaton Center. 
but many of them were digital brands who don't necessarily have a physical store. And so when I think about those jewelers and other artisans who have product that can be part of our marketplace, we've already done it. Like we, you know, what you're, what you're asking, yes, we piloted it. Yes. It, but I'll tell you over 34% of the customers who came through mm-hmm. our, that activation also went on to buy a product in one of the stores uh, at the Eden center. And so it proves the power of bringing together digital oh, and physical, interesting. right? And it opens up the option for a digital brand to entertain and try out what it's like to show their product in a physical world. And, and an interesting, you know, additional benefit to some of those jewelers and online brands was they saw an uptick in their e-commerce site traffic because people could actually touch and feel the bracelet, see that it's real and, and appreciate the Mm -hmm. quality. So it has a nice benefit to both physical and digital. So I think that is something I'd like to explore as well is broaden it, not just to what's physically available today in the property, but also tag on other members of the marketplace and other retailers and brands that I'm sure Kappa can introduce us to, to, to expand the offering to include their products as well. On the last episode of Live with Kappa, I spoke with Virgil Olivier, who's the CEO and co-founder of LiveScale, which does live uh, sales streaming events. Is that something as you've been looking to, you know, you were saying the, the Middle East and Asia, what other innovations or other trends are you seeing in the, in the retail sector that you kind of have your eye on in terms of wanting to hopefully incorporate into the Canadian landscape? You know, I did actually get a chance to watch Virgil's uh, interview and I have to tell you what I thought was most brilliant about when you asked him how he found that and what he, he basically it's, he described a situation where they had seen it happening in another market. They tried it out here and they realized that, wow, this is a real market. 9%. I think he, I think he said that 9% of total e-commerce buying was being done live through live streaming. What I love about that is that's how the best innovation happens mm. is when you take something that seems to have been proven, even if you tweak it, you validate it, make sure customers desire it, make sure it's feasible for your market, and then go. And that's exactly what he did with or is doing with, with LiveScale. Now, the topic of live streaming. I have to say, mm-hmm. I think we're, we're at a potential turning point in Canada where we could start to see more of that. This is an example, right? You and I talking like this and, and, and doing this. Retailers selling live, mm-hmm. retail associates becoming yeah. their own celebrities with their own followers. Last week, my team and I had a chance to see a live demo with um, Alibaba. They showed us their platform on Alipay and Tmall, where they had two individuals live streaming Lancome products, 14 million followers, buying instantly online, hitting the cart as, as, as the two individuals were trying wow. makeup. Well, guess what? Those two individuals were sitting at a retail counter in a mall, live streaming in real time to the internet. And that is where this became such a, a unique opportunity for us. We're like, well, wait a minute. We should be creating that platform for Canadian brands through Live by CF. Why not take the app and expand it to allow for this live streaming, allow for retailers and retail associates to actually do this themselves at scale. And we partner with, whether it's live scale or others, to actually create that capability. So I think live streaming is probably the one that I think from an, what we're seeing in, in China and other parts of Asia as a very real phenomenon that has essentially, you know, monetization potential. And so we we do want to explore that in terms of how we go about participating in that ecosystem for sure. It sounds like the Venn diagram of of the digital space and the retail space just continues to, you know, get closer and closer for the consumer as they access both sides of the of the retail space. You know, one is never going to replace the other, but they will continue to integrate in new and exciting ways. Yes, absolutely. Jose, I've so appreciated you being here to to share this with us. In your um, travels, you know, virtually as it is right now, when you've been looking at what other properties and other markets are doing, is there is there anything that you've seen that might seem a little, you know, out there for the Canadian market right now, but that uh, that was really quite innovative or interesting where you thought, wow, like that is that is something else that you that you've seen people doing in other in other parts of the world? You know, I, I do. I've told this story a few times uh, recently. And and again, I know it's 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 something that 
we've talked about China and Asia. There's a number of different markets I could refer to, but um, I had an experience. I had the privilege and opportunity to go to China, um, you know, about 18 months ago. And what I saw there um, was a new method of retail that truly brings together the best of both digital in terms of efficiency, but, but the practicality and, and inspiration of physical. And so they have a retail location called the Hamas store. Um, we can provide the information after you can find, you can find videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and, and other um, platforms to, to walk you through this experience. And I can even share later on the platform, my own video that I shot when I was there, but essentially you walk into a Hamas store, it's largely grocery um, it's and they've taken the grocery store and they've made it exciting. So imagine you're looking at a, and the best example I can give you, because it seems so mundane, is you're, you're, you, pick up a piece, you pick up some lettuce and you use your device, <laughs> you scan the lettuce, it tells you when the lettuce was picked, how far it, then you decide at that point whether you um, wow. buy the product on the spot and put it into your cart. Second option is you tag the product so that it's in your cart, but you haven't made your full purchase yet. And then the third is you tag the product and you put it into the, um, into the shopper cart where someone goes behind you and packs it for you and ships it home. So you've done and have stay and have dinner with your wow. family or your friends, your shopping's done for the day or for the weekend. And, and the Hamad takes care of sending it to your home for you. So you can either pay on the spot and walk out, pay on the spot and pick up your bag at the end of the, at the end of the shopping experience or pay on the spot and have someone else take it home for you. So they've really provided, there's no excuse. You've got the information at hand. You either don't like lettuce, in which case you don't buy it, or you, or you, you're walking out of there with lettuce or someone's going to send it to you. And, <laughs> and this is what e-commerce, this is what people experience with e-commerce. Everything but yeah. cooking the lettuce for you. <laughs> I'm sure they've thought of that since then. Yeah. Does the chef come with it? That would be awesome. <laughs> Jose, thank you so, so much for joining me today on Live with Kappa. If people are interested in, in following along with, uh, with the innovations that Cadillac Fairview is doing in their communities across Canada, what's the best way for them to stay well, on top of things? Well, I think following this channel works, Instagram. We also publish a lot on our LinkedIn platforms. And, and I would encourage everybody to, you know, hold us to what we're saying download the live by cf app it's available on both apple and uh, google play um, give us your feedback and our social channels are always active with what's coming next and in particular our app will become the method through which we invite people to participate in some of these pilots so as we get into more interesting um, applications if you're in the retail business or you're a shopper or you're a retailer or a designer and you want to be on the list to experiment, there's no better way than to download the app because then we can contact you and open that up for your, for your options. Um, but in terms of our, you know, how we're going to provide that, we're going to do that mostly through our social channels. And then we've also stood up, a, which we can, we can send after the, after the live chat, our ravelbycf.com uh, website where we're going to keep the market updated on, you know, how we're interfacing with, uh, with the retailers. So I want to thank you as well for your great, uh, moderation and Vicki Milner for Kappa and everything that she's doing to support, um, you. you know, the retail business. It's important, you know, retail employs over 2 million Canadians drives tens of billions of dollars of retail spend for the economy. A lot of small business and entrepreneurs um, and designers that we want to keep in business and help grow. And so it's a very important business for, for Canada and for our GDP. So thanks for putting a focus on it. Oh, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. And I, I will speak for Vicki and say it's, it's her pleasure as well. Thank you so much, Jose. Thank you everyone for, for tuning in. This video will be available on CAFA's IGTV channel, as well as all the other Live with CAFA's that we've been doing since, uh, since the end of March when, um, when COVID turned our, our world in Canada upside down. So if you're looking to go back and see any of the past episodes, they're all there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Live with Kappa will resume in some form. Stay tuned uh, after the summer. Um, and in the meantime, everyone stay well and uh, looking forward to seeing you at a social distance Thank at a you. shopping mall. Bye-bye. Take care, Jose.